In this session, we're going to migrate group policies from Windows Server into Microsoft Intune. And it's so easy to do. So check it out. You're going to learn something. Greetings fellow YouTubers, it's a Friday, how are you? My goodness me, I've just realized I've been a Microsoft certified trainer for 25 years. How scary is that? Okay, so um, for any of you out there who have been on my training courses, I take my hat off to you and thank you so much uh, for joining me on this journey. Uh, on today's episode, I thought I would take a look at a request from a number of people. Um, Microsoft, of course, in Intune, uh, have a tool which allows you to migrate group policy settings into Microsoft Intune. Now, in the past, this was always done through PowerShell and it was somewhat clumsy, but I'm delighted to say it is so much easier now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through the basics of kind of group policy and just a little bit of how it works. And then I'm going to talk about preparing the migration report and actually going through the migration itself. Now, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please come on board and help me out. Only 20% of you have subscribed at the moment. So come on, show me some love. Uh, bump the subscribe button up there, ring that bell and come on board and join our great learning community. And if you enjoy the session, as always, please bump the like button. It does make a difference to my channel. Now, if you've got questions about this or any of my other topics, of course, just get those down below. Okay, well, I think without any further ado, let's jump in, have a look at the demos. Quite a large demo today, so I really hope that you enjoy. So to begin our journey into group policy migration, I guess the first thing we need to understand is actually group policies themselves. Uh, group policies were really first came around in 1995 with Windows 95. Uh, and essentially they segment the user portion of the registry as opposed to the computer portion of the registry. So for example, if you have a group policy setting based on a computer configuration, it will affect any user who logs on at that device. Likewise, user configurations affect uh, users irrelevant of the device that they actually log into. And you can see it's very much a folder hive uh, type construction. And you can see that in this case, I've got a number of different organizational units. And you can notice that there are little arrows just to the left of these organizational units. Now you'll notice that by default, we get a default uh, uh, domain policy, of course, and that affects every user. And it essentially follows that user from device to device. Uh, now, um, we have a number of different organizational units here, and there's one particular one that I want to take a look at. So I'm going to expand out my group policy settings, and you can see that here I've got a group policy called the Windows Client, Client Policy. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this policy, and, um, and you can see here that I've got a specific computer and uh, user configuration. Now, again, just as a quick review, um, you can see that we have both policies and preferences. Policies are permanently written into the device registry and preferences are not permanently written. So they're kind of optional settings, if you will. So you can see uh, I can come into, for example, my administrative uh, template policy here. And basically what you have here is you have a number of default settings. And these are actually created in what we call ADMX uh, template format. And you can go in here and you can configure things like um, browser settings, um, things like system settings, for example. You can also configure a popular one as the uh, start menu and taskbar settings. So, for example, if you wanted to restrict any of the items on that, and you can see it's essentially enforcing that or writing that uh, into the registry of that device. So the next time that the user logs in, this policy would then kick into them. 
So now that we've created our policies, the first thing that we want to do is obviously migrate that policy. So what you would typically do here, you would obviously go into the policy settings and configure it exactly how you want it. So the next thing that we want to do is we now want to go ahead and we want to generate a report. So to do that, really simple, you just right click the group policy object and choose to save the report. Now, um, when you save the report, it'll offer a name. If you want to change it, go ahead. And very importantly, you just need to click on the drop down arrow and just save that as an XML file. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And now that that report is generated, I can simply close down the group policy objects and I'm going to go back into my portal. Now here in Intune, I'm going to come into devices and in the devices area, we have group policy analytics. This tool is so much easier than the previous PowerShell. Now you can see that you can both import group policies and more importantly, you can also export them as well. I had that question uh, on my channel the other day. So to simply import our group policy setting, I'm simply going to go ahead. I'm going to browse my PC and there it is. There is my XML file and I'm going to just import that now. So that can take a moment or two just to come in. And again, likewise, as before, if you have any scope tags that you've created, of course, you can add them in as well. Now, for the purpose of this demo, I haven't gone ahead and done that. So once I'm happy that everything is fine, I'm just going to click on next. And now you can see that the group policy uh, has indeed come in. Now, uh, you'll notice that we have a number of options. First of all, I've not actually imported it yet. All this is done is just simply generate a report. And you can see here, just there's a little score there. It says you currently, there is 90% support for those group policy settings. And so that means any configurations that you've got in your domain environment will come through to your new devices in Azure Active Directory. So that is absolutely awesome. So you can go through, as you can see, the various policy uh, settings here, and you can see which policies are supported and which policies are not. And this is great because you can then go in and decide whether you, is it going to be fine for you or not. Um, you can also see how the policies are actually mapped as well. So you can see it talks about the device, the value of the device ID, and also how it's mapping in Azure Active Directory via Intune as well. So this is absolutely awesome. So as I've mentioned, any scope tags that you've created, you can also view these here as well. Uh, and as I said, this is fantastic because you can filter. So if you want to filter certain objects or certain pieces of software or certain settings, uh, you can do that as well. Now, you'll notice that you can also migrate from there, um, but you can also, once you're happy, you can migrate from the main portal as well. So again, this is something that you wouldn't uh, kind of just do on a whim. You would obviously plan it carefully. Uh, you would analyze those settings accordingly. Uh, so now that we're ready to go, I can simply select the policy and when I'm happy uh, that I either want to import it or export it, uh, again, I can also click on that migration tool. Now, you can see in the group policy analytics preview, it gives you a nice overview. Um, as I said, it shows me that I've got 90% um, uh, of the settings available. And again, I can also view the MDM support. So you can actually go into the policy itself uh, and uh, it would show you if there were any kind of issues um, here. And in this case, you can see that everything's uh, looking pretty good. So I'll just go ahead and click on the back button. So another issue that you might come across are obviously during the migration process, if there are any unknown settings, 
These are, for example, could be third-party settings, third-party apps, or something like that, that is just simply not compatible with uh, mobile device management. And you can see that, you could, although we've got the 90% here, um, you can also go in, which you, know, you can see here, you can go in and view that report, Everything looks uh, absolutely fine here. You can also see that anything that's got a little triangle uh, could indicate that there's a potential problem. And of course, that, that uh, it might not be compatible. So again, that's something that you probably uh, want to watch out for. Um, as I said, you, this is something that you wouldn't do on a whim. You would go through each of these settings uh, kind of step by step. Um, when you are ready to migrate, um, you can click on that either the migrate button here or back in the group policy migration tool. To be honest, it's pretty much the same thing. And here you can choose which settings that you actually want to go and migrate. Now you'll notice here that the incompatible settings are actually grayed out and won't be included here. But I'm happy that um, these will be uh, acceptable to me. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those. I'm going to click on next to proceed. And now you get a quick overview of all of those settings. Uh, what you want to do is obviously give the migration job a name. So I'm just going to call it client migration. I'm being original here. You can put in a description and when you're happy, I can just go ahead and click on next. Now, if you want to add in any scope tags, so for example, machine types or anything like that, you can do that here. Now, in terms of how to deploy, uh, you can add a particular group. So if you've uh, got a group of computers, if you've got a group of users, um, but in this example, I'm only using one device. So I'm just going to use uh, everyone uh, because it's just one device. So I'm happy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, next and I'm going to go ahead and confirm that migration. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Off it goes. And as I said, depending on the size and the amount of group policy settings, it might take a little bit of time, but generally um, it's accomplished pretty quick. Um, but I mean, when you look back a couple of years ago, when all of this was uh, configurable by group, uh, by uh, PowerShell, this is so much easier to use. I really got to tell you. Okay, so once that migration is actually complete, uh, you can uh, just refresh the screen. It just takes a couple of minutes to refresh. And I can go back in now to the uh, devices. So if I go into the configuration settings, so I'm just gonna come down here into my devices. And you can see that in here, I've got my uh, devices. And of course, I want to take a look at my configuration settings. And you've got a number of different configuration settings here. You can, you've got a monitor option, uh, and you can also see that the policy has now successfully come across. Uh, you can also import your own ADMX uh, files in there as well, by the way. Now, at the moment, my client machine is not logged off and logged back on again. So it's they've not uh, been applied at the moment. But you can see this is essentially what would happen here. So again, there's that policy. I can go through. I can edit the, the tags. I can edit that policy from here. I can edit those settings. I can choose who I want to deploy this policy to. Because the fact is, it's now in as a configuration profile in Microsoft Intune. And as I said, if you've got your own ADMX templates to maybe third party applications, this is awesome because you can also uh, import those as well. So there you go. So there you have it, migrating group policy settings across into Microsoft Intune. It's not as scary as it looks, is it? Hey, listen, I really hope that you enjoyed this session. Remember, uh, you can get documentation on all of this on learn.microsoft.com. So definitely uh, go ahead and check that out. That's it for this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the session. If you did, bump the like button. It does make a difference. And if you've not subscribed, well, hell, come on board. Come and join my great learning community. And I really do appreciate it. And comments, questions about this or any of my other sessions, just as always, get those down below. That's it for today. 
I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.